Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get started here, even though there's people in back. Uh, feel free to go back and get more pizza and stuff like that as the meeting goes on. Uh, today's main topic is going to be holiday gift ideas, and I'll be presenting Tom Kreitzer. Uh, first, a little club agenda. Our next meeting is December 13th, Tuesday, and we'll be in the Caribbean room over there. And our topic will be best uh, software for tablets and smartphones. Uh, we did this uh, back in 2015, but we'll update uh, the applications. And we'll also have a number of new recommendations and things like that in there. The, uh, we do have another meeting, the Mac SIG meetings, and that's November 18th. And if you do have an iPad or <clears throat> excuse me, an iPhone or any Mac, it's, it's very useful to attend those meetings uh, uh, on theirs, and they set the agenda usually right before the meeting. Our officers, our president is Jim Holman. Jim's in back there. Thank you, Jim. Linda Brown is our vice president. Linda? Oh, I don't see Linda yet. She'll probably wander down. Our membership secretary is Paul Ebert. Paul's in front there. Uh, Treasurer and Max Sig is Mike Griffin. Uh, Stan Miller is our secretary, stands in back there. Andrew uh, Pertusi is our communication coordinator, and Andrew's in back there. And my name's Tom Kreitzer, I'm a director at large. Uh, members old and new, you can pay your dues to Paul there. And a reminder, if you are changing your email or retiring from 3M, uh, make sure and notify Paul so uh, we can get the email changed because that's the way that we keep in touch with most people. If you do have any suggestions for topics, uh, you can email uh, any of the board members or talk to us. Uh, we're always looking for people to volunteer to present on hardware software. It may be something that you use at work or some hobby that you have at home. Uh, we're always looking for that. And if you don't want to present, uh, we're looking for, you can write a short, meaning a paragraph or a couple of sentences or a long article, and we'll include it in our monthly eBytes newsletter. Excuse me. Out on our website, we do have our past meetings and slides and any recording. Uh, if we can record it, we'll uh, put that out there also. So if you miss one or you just want to review one from uh, a couple of weeks ago or last year, uh, you can go out and take a look there. We also have our deals section, and we have our eBytes newsletter. And uh, the link is sent in all the emails that we send to you also. Uh, annually, we do our club survey, and our club survey, I'll be sending that out next week. And if you could return it by December 18th, that'd be great. Uh, there's quite a few questions in there, and we use those questions and your responses to uh, help us plan for the PC Club, uh, not only what some of the topics will be, but um, where we need to do some additional work uh, uh, of what people have and, and where they're going there. So it is used to uh, help us direct the club there. Any club questions before we start? Okay. Uh, I'd like to thank Stan and his helpers and Stan's volunteers this year. We have uh, Al Rivar. I don't know where, where is Al. There we go. Uh, we got Jim Beardsley. Jim, uh, Jim's in back uh, replenishing the pizza there. Uh, Sue uh, Corpella? Corpola. Sue's back there. Thank you, Sue. Uh, Paul Ebert. Uh, and those are people that helped uh, help Stan uh, and that set up and they'll clean up and, and that. So uh, let's give them all a round of applause for all their work here. <laughs> and our format today is go ahead, eat your pizza, um, ask questions. It's going to be informal. Feel free to go back and uh, get another cookie or fruit or pizza or that. Uh, I'm not offended by people moving around there, so uh, 
do what you got to do there. Because I'm going to be eating during this too. So, uh, gifts for the our gifts for the holidays. I mentioned out on our club website, we do have a page for some deals. So you can look out there, and there are some uh, codes to use for like some Apple rebates and some things like that. We also have tips, and we have tips on rebates, how to do it. And the disclaimer down there is basically saying uh, the prices with some of these links, uh, you may be able to find better deals. Always check around, uh, uh, Google, uh, check prices of various things at different places there. Uh, this is the results from the last survey. Uh, we asked the question of where do members buy uh, some of their equipment and that. And this is always interesting because uh, it gives you an idea of the percentage of people that are buying from some of these uh, both websites and brick and mortar stores. So Best Buy in this case, we have 71% of the people have bought stuff there. Amazon, roughly half the people have bought. Office Max, Target, Walmart, you can see all these different ones going all the way down. So there's a variety of uh, places there uh, that uh, we do shop. Excuse me there. Uh, Black Friday is coming up, November 25th. And you can keep track of the sales with some of the websites, and my favorite is blackfriday.com, but there's also, this is a list I saw in one of my uh, uh, emails of these 10 other sites that track uh, Black Friday and the best deals and that. Excuse me. And what you'll see out there, if you haven't been out to one of these, is, uh, uh, let me go. So this is BlackFriday.com. Uh, now it's pretty early, so there there's not that many stores that have uh, have their ads out uh, where they put them out here. They've captured them and put them out here. But in the next uh, week or two weeks, you'll have literally hundreds of stores out there with their uh, with their ads and what's going on there. Uh, so it's it's a case of uh, uh, let me go back here. Let's go here and uh, so this is the one for Sam's Club, uh, and I grabbed a few things out there. Where is it? Or no, this is showing Dell here. But uh, you can see what they'll do is they'll scan in the uh, various images of the flyers. Uh, you can make shopping lists. You, you can uh, be notified when the new ad is posted out here. So the websites make it real easy for you to plan your, uh, your shopping there. In addition to uh, going to the stores on uh, the Friday, uh, Thursday or Friday, because a number of the stores do open up on uh, Thanksgiving or still open up on Thanksgiving, uh, you do have Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday, uh, this is a list that was uh, that I saw that was uh, had rated the uh, online websites for the best deals that they had on Cyber Monday. And the first one uh, uh, coming up first was Amazon. Amazon, if you're not familiar, has uh, deals called lightning deals uh, that are only good for a short period of time or until they run out of the particular item. And they'll post those up on Cyber Monday and you can get some really good deals. Target is number two. Newegg uh, is number three. And Newegg, uh, uh, I think in our survey, there was like 15% of the people had uh, used Newegg. Newegg's uh, a nice site uh, if you're looking for uh, hardware or that, uh, hardware or software, you can get uh, refurbished hardware there also. So if you've been out to the club picnic uh, where there's lots of items there, uh, Linda buys uh, everything from New Newegg there. 
So she's able to buy, uh, we give her a budget of $500, but she ends up buying the equivalent of about $1,500 to $2,000 worth of uh, prizes uh, with the $500 there. And then we have uh, some of the other big ones, Best Buy and Walmart also have specials for Cyber Monday. Uh, yep. Amazon has actually started a free Black Friday. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of places that will have these additional sales and, and things like that. And certainly, you know, look for those if you're looking for something particularly. Uh, but you'll also see that they'll also have a number of sales that are just on that uh, Monday there. Okay. This is from a list I saw where it talked about seven things that you should uh, look to buy on Black Friday. And the first one uh, they mentioned was televisions. And uh, I liked one of their statements, don't let the fact that you're five foot two stop you from throwing that 65, or 65 inch HD TV over your shoulder and purchasing it. And I got a kick out of that because uh, about, I don't know, it must have been 10 years ago or so, my dad was looking for a new PC at that time. And uh, they had a um, Black Friday sale at Walmart and he was going to go there to get it. <clears throat> and we mentioned to him that uh, because there's so many people and lines of people and stuff like that, that you may not get a shopping cart to, to put it in and stuff like that. So when he went to the store to purchase, uh, to purchase this, he brought with him about 10 feet of rope. <laughs> and his plan was, you know, because the box, he figured it was a monitor and a, t and a tower unit, he figured he'd tie his rope around it and then just drag it up towards the checkout there. So, so he came prepared. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what they thought when he was coming in from rope. If he was, you know, a cow hand that just came in from the uh, prairie there or what was going on, but he, he was prepared for the sale there. Uh, I mentioned here that you can save hundreds of dollars on sets. Uh, uh, below here, uh, you'll see there's, uh, I, these are a couple of examples because Sam's has its ad out here. So this is an actual uh, ad there on, for Black Friday. Sam's will be selling a 50 inch for $298. Uh, if you want to get into the 4K TVs, uh, high resolution uh, machines, uh, uh, there's a 70 inch for $998. So less than $1,000 uh, you're getting some of it. And this is a smart TV, meaning that it, uh, you can also get at a number of the apps and things like that. This TV uh, isn't a smart TV, but it does support Roku. So it's the equivalent of having a Roku box uh, uh, connected to the TV there. But TVs have always been a, a, a very good purchase uh, on Black Friday, and you'll see lots of deals with those. Uh, another thing to purchase on Black Friday or Cyber Monday, low-priced laptops. Uh, even though we've, most of us have tablets now, tablets don't let you do everything. So we still use uh, machines, and uh, at this point, more of us are buying laptops than we are desktops. So laptops are still very popular, uh, and a laptop with a keyboard or an, and a larger screen than what you have on a tablet is easier for creating and managing content. So if you're working with spreadsheets, working with Word documents, uh, working with uh, your budget and things like that, websites, Having more real estate on the screen, having a keyboard can make it a lot easier to, to work with. I mentioned here, don't forget about Chromebooks, because, uh, and you'll see some examples a little later in, in the slide. Um, Chromebooks uh, are running on the Chrome operating system. They're not running on Microsoft Windows. And usually you'll see those for maybe 50 to $100 cheaper or a, the same as like a Windows 10 machine. Another thing to look for on Black Friday is video games. Uh, you'll see a lot of sales. Uh, typically there's two for one deals. 
so you want to uh, look around if you're interested in video games. Same for uh, discs, uh, DVDs, and Blu-rays. Even though people are doing more stuff over over uh, the internet uh, with things like Netflix and that, it's nice to have uh, some movies, and especially if you've got little kids or things like that, it's nice to uh, be able to pop them on. Uh, Walmart, as an example, last year had 200, over 200 movies for less than $2. And so, uh, you know, if you uh, certainly that can be easier. Yes. Uh, Blu-rays, uh, it's, a, it's a case of certainly the machines themselves are going to continue to work. Uh, so as long as you have the, the disc and have a TV that you can connect it to, you're going to be able to watch it. Uh, as on-demand movies become cheaper and cheaper and more prevalent and you have smart TVs and everything like that, then certainly the need for having your own copy uh, is, is not needed there. So the days when people would build their own library and, you know, have hundreds and hundreds of movies, you know, you don't see that as much anymore. But certainly you do see people, uh, uh, especially with kids or things like that, uh, using it. Okay. Uh, some other things to look for uh, on Black Friday, smartphones. You'll see uh, all kinds of sales. Uh, Lots of discounts on the high-end models. Uh, what they're trying to do is they're trying to uh, entice people away from the uh, Apple iPhone. So you'll see the HTC and Google and Motorola and lots of specials there. So if you're looking to switch providers or uh, get a new phone or things like that, certainly take a look at what's available out there. Uh, there's still problems with that, and there's, there's some of their solutions to it is to uh, cut down the charging of the battery and things like that. Uh, uh, you know, the, the trouble is uh, with any device, any phone that you have, you've got a battery in there, and that battery can overheat. Uh, and that's, that's the danger of any... any uh, lithium ion battery there and since those batteries are used in so many devices it's it's really a case of it could happen to a lot of lot of different models and things like that now certainly yeah they yeah i mean and that's that's part of the issue is how how are they going to stop people I mean, yes, they are screening, but the screeners don't always know the models of the phone, and people have them hidden, and people have them in bags. And but uh, yeah, it's it's an issue out there certainly, uh, and hopefully it'll make some of the manufacturers uh, do a little more testing. Unfortunately, you don't see a lot of testing or or as much testing as you used to have with some of these phones and some of these devices because they have to get to market so quick. You know, their opportunity of selling and the new models coming out is so short that they uh, frequently don't have a lot of testing time for some of this stuff. And so they sell the item and then wait to see what happens when, when it's sold. Uh, tablets are another another thing. Uh, even though you know, certainly we still need laptops, uh, tablets. Whether you have an old one uh, that needs to be upgraded, or you're looking for just another one to have around, uh, you can get uh, Apple tablets and stuff like that. Uh, Apple, uh, if you're not familiar, pretty much sets its prices. So, so usually uh, uh, stores cannot reduce the price. The only thing that they can do is do things like give gift cards. So you'll see some of the stores give gift cards, like Target in the past has, has given uh, gift cards. If you buy an iPad, you get a $100 gift pad. I mean, you get a $100 gift card uh, with the iPad. So if you're looking to buy, uh, that's frequently a very good time to uh, purchase there. Uh, 
and uh, uh, upgrading or, or even buying a, a cheaper Android there. And you'll see some of the examples uh, when, I, when I go through some of these other slides um, of, of cheaper Androids out there. Uh, the Androids I picked up, uh, uh, this goes back three years ago or four years ago, I picked up Androids for my parents, for my mom and dad. I got them each an Android. I think I paid $69 at that time for it. So, you know, they play games on it. They can get their email. They can do searches. Uh, uh, so they can do the, you know, quite a bit on there, and uh, they love them there. Cameras are, are another thing that you can uh, look for on, on Black Friday there. Even though uh, more and more people use their phone to take pictures, uh, phones do have their uh, drawbacks. So if you're looking to get a better camera than what your phone has, uh, you can certainly look around. Some of the high-end cameras or even point-and-shoot, GoPros, or a drone there. This is an example. I just took this out of this last Sunday's paper, uh, the ad for Target. And you'll see uh, you know, some of the things here, uh, Bluetooth uh, headphones here or ear, earplugs, $39 for a Bluetooth set here. So if you're getting the new iPhone 7 or you just want to go without cord or things like that, you can start picking up some of this stuff. Certainly the uh, fitness trackers, heart rate monitors, uh, smart watches, all of those have come down in price too. So uh, you can get all kinds of deals on those. Here's some tablets. This is from the Best Buy this last week. And this is where I'm kind of showing, you know, here's a seven inch uh, tablet, Android tablet for $50. Uh, and if you wanted a smaller one, certainly, certainly that's an option. But here's a 10 inch. This is a 10 inch with 32 gigabytes, uh, good resolution, quad core processor, $99. So you can get good little tablets there. And if you have an older uh, style tablet, again, you know, these things are changing all the time. So there are bigger and better and, and that models out there. Some of the drawbacks on the cheaper uh, tablets are the battery life may not be quite the same. Well, it won't be the same as what you get on an iPad or some of these other. The display won't be quite as crisp. But instead of paying $399 for a tablet or $699 for a tablet, you're getting it for $99. Here's also from Best Buy, some laptops. So yeah, you can get higher end laptops uh, in here. But what I'm pointing out down here is, uh, this is a nice little HP laptop, quad core, 15 inch display, touch screen display, so you can touch it and, and do your stuff. Six gigabytes of memory, one terabyte hard drive, $349. So uh, you can get some awful good deals there. Here's, here's uh, some kind of uh, hybrids here. And by hybrid, hybrid between a laptop and a, and a, a tablet here. This is an ASIC Chromebook. So this uses that Chrome operating system. But again, just like your phone can run uh, apps and and uh, do a lot of things, that's exactly what this can do. So uh, you can find apps, you can connect to the internet, you can do your email, you can do all that stuff there with a Chromebook. And here's a touch screen Chromebook. So again, you can touch, touch on here, it's a 10 inch screen. Uh, so it's a, like having a laptop, but also on the other side you have a keyboard so you can flip it and you can uh, use it with or without the keyboard there. And it has nine hours of battery life. 
so it's uh, pretty good there. Uh, yes. Is the Chromebooks will run standalone now. It's similar to your phone or, or that where, you know, depending on the app, if the app, if you're connecting to an app, let's say, that needs to get access to your data up on uh, the Internet and you don't have an Internet connection, you're not going to be able to do anything with that app. But certainly there's apps that, uh, let's say, it's uh, playing music and I've got the music score stored locally. It's gonna it's gonna work whether you have a connection or not. Yeah. Right. The, these these you do have storage and and that's somewhere again like your phone or or stuff like that. And if you have a tablet, it's it's the same type of deal there. And this is uh, this other example here is uh, uh, Lenovo, and Lenovo, if you're not familiar, is the spinoff from IBM. So IBM, when it got out of the hardware business, it sold off, uh, and Lenovo uh, is is the brand for that. And uh, they have a model here for $179, uh, 2.2 pounds. Uh, uh, Again, it's a not, not the most powerful processor, but again, here's a decent sized screen, here's a keyboard, uh, running Windows 10, uh, and uh, $179. Uh, next, I, I'm showing a few of the home assistants. How many people have uh, Amazon Echo or a Google Home? So a few. Um, it is certainly becoming more and more popular. And uh, when they first came out, the first unit out was the Amazon Echo, and that's $179. Uh, but since that time, you also have this smaller version here from Amazon called the Echo Dot. Yes, and and you can the Echo Dot. Uh, you can buy in packs of uh, six for two hundred and forty nine dollars, and you can put them out throughout the house and and stuff like that. But uh, uh, the the first one you needed to have the Amazon Echo. The latest version, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jim. This latest version, you do not have to have the Echo. Because this came out, this came out maybe eight months ago or nine months ago, and since that time they have a brand new version, and <laughs> the brand new version is is uh, I believe, and and I certainly check into it, but it'll operate without without an echo in the house. There, the first versions did require the echo. Uh, and if you're not familiar with a device like this, if you've got a smartphone and you talk into your smartphone, it's kind of that same technology where you can say certain commands, it'll do things, uh, so it can play music uh, that has speaker in there. You can ask it questions uh, and it'll respond back. Uh, you can, if you have uh, other smart devices in your home, you can usually link those up also, so if you have lighting in your house, you could turn on lights and you could do various things uh, um, with that. So it's, uh, they have a variety of uh, uses there and uh, certainly they're becoming, they're, their price is coming down quite a bit uh, over the years and they're becoming more and more useful to the point where, uh, you know, maybe 10 years from now, uh, people will have devices like this in every single room of their house uh, so that you'll be able to walk into a room and tell it to turn on lights, tell it to look this up. Uh, you're in the kitchen, you want a recipe or you want to uh, uh, add a reminder at the grocery store, you'll be able to talk into it and add that uh, right there. And Amazon was the first one to come out with it and then I think two or three months ago, Google came out with their version, and it's called the Google Home. 
and uh, it's a very similar device, and uh, so it's good that there's a little competition, and we'll see where, where that kind of leads, leads us. Uh, next, we'll take a look at uh, 15 gadgets uh, to put on your holiday wish list. Uh, this I got from uh, Network World, and so they list a few there. So here's some gadgets. Uh, virtual reality. How many people have a VR headset or, or that? Okay, we got a few. My son has one of the cheaper ones. Yeah, there's... Right now, okay. Amazing. Yeah, even the cheap ones, uh, if, you're, if you want to get a flavor for virtual reality, what you can get, uh, and I covered it last year, is Google sells a piece of cardboard, and you assemble a cardboard, and you make your viewer. Uh, and the viewer then holds your smartphone. Your smartphone, uh, uh, their software, and that for the playback, so that it has the two deals for the eyes and will use the orientation and, and some of that of your head and your tilt uh, to where if you just want to see what some of the stuff does for $15 or less, you can get the cardboard version and then you have, do have to hold it up to your face, whereas these obviously have uh, a lot more capability and you're not holding it up and, and doing stuff. But if you've never seen virtual reality, the 3D, the moving, the looking up and down and stuff like that. Um, they are really neat and they are the future of gaming and some of the things there uh, that are gonna go along with that. This is, this is uh, somewhat along the line uh, where you do have a display and uh, headphones, but this is more your mobile theater. So if you truly wanted to get on the plane, watch a movie and not be disturbed by someone next to you and get the best quality, this is, this is one way that you'd be able to, uh, to uh, watch your movie and have the highest quality, best sound, and no disturbance there. This is a, a little novelty, uh, a levitating Bluetooth speaker. So, so the Death Star here, is levitating above this base here, and it acts as a Bluetooth speaker. So it is, uh, you're able to connect your phone or your uh, tablet to it and play music uh, through it. Uh, so it's kind of a, a novelty to have on your desk or, or somewhere there where this thing's just kind of hovering up there, and it's playing your music there. It's $179, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll look for one at a garage sale. If I can pick it up at a garage sale for 20 bucks, I'd, I'd get it. I'm not going to pay $179. So it's a Death Star function. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't there. Uh, maybe the next version. Uh, here's a fragrance. Uh, so in the house, uh, you can have this machine and you can control it from your phone and it'll uh, uh, give you a different ambiance there in the home. Uh, sleep number bed. Uh, now you get some of the model or one of the models you have, uh, it'll interface with your phone and so you can control the bed uh, with your smartphone there. Does anyone have the uh, mobile app for the for the sleep number? No. I mean, the beds are very nice. I'm, I'm not sure the, I guess, 2300 there for a queen. I, you know, you, you think of the future of technology, you're going to get more and more things that are connected to your phone and you're going to be able to control and do things. So. <laughs> well, I don't think anyone's going to want to roll you out of bed or. <laughs> I woke up and it was a 10, and I normally sleep at a 50. <laughs> you know, there's not a whole lot that you can do. It's not like you could uh, 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 kill somebody by uh, reprogramming it.
Yeah, that's it. If you're, if you're not familiar, the, the latest uh, hack and, and problems that were occurred were denials of service attacks on various websites or companies, and a lot of them came from smart devices. And those devices, a lot of them are easily hacked because they either don't have accounts and passwords or it's a common account and password that uh, hackers can use to gain control of that. Once they gain control of it, then they can either reprogram it or change, make minor modifications to the code that's in there to actually attack some of these sites there. And so that's, that's kind of what happened there. And, and you see it with routers today. That's why when we do our, our Wi-Fi and we talk about setting up your Wi-Fi in your house, you must change your account and you must change the password that's the default that comes with your router. Otherwise, anyone can, I can walk, I can walk up to your sidewalk, I can take out my laptop or my smartphone and I can connect into your router, I can change your router and so I could lock you out and only let me in. I could do all kinds of things on your network there once I have control of that. Uh, here's another item here uh, for meditation. So uh, it uh, enables you to get your feedback uh, and uh, tell you if you're meditating, your EEG uh, sensors there. Uh, so again, another example of a device that uh, will hook into the smartphone and let you uh, do things. Uh, this I thought was rather unusual. I mean, not unusual, it's a backup backup camera system but most cars nowadays do come with the with the cameras already installed uh, this is if you had an older uh, model that didn't have it you can buy this license plate so this license plate uh, you attach to the back of the car uh, you don't have to run any wires uh, it's powered by solar energy so you don't have to uh, connect it to anything there, and then it uh, uh, connects by Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to your smartphone, and you'll see the uh, images from the camera showing up on, uh, on the smartphone there. Kind of interesting technology, but uh, again, uh, I don't know. You know, if I'm on Shark Tank, I'm going, no, nope, not for me. It's passed. <laughs> it's passed. It's, uh, you know, and now, now we do have backup cameras on, on all the cars. Uh, the, there's not that much of a market out there for it. But it is kind of unique there. Right. Well, and, you, and you'll see in the cars, if you've, if you've ever seen the dash cams, uh, <laughs> especially in Russia and some of the European countries because um, they've been known to have a lot of uh, people jumping in front of cars or car accidents uh, and then trying to blame people. So a lot of the cars will have a dash camera there that's recording all the time so that if there ever is an issue, they can play it back and, and do it. But you can do that relatively cheaply with uh, uh, some like the not the GoPro, but like the GoPros, you can get starting at $50, you can uh, put them in the car and, and have them function that way. This, this is kind of, kind of unique here. If you do have a whole bunch of uh, photographs, one of the drawbacks in the past has been the speed to scan them. So if you put it in a typical scanner, you know, and you're scanning at a fairly high resolution, it's a slow process, especially if you're talking about hundreds or thousands of photos. Well, this is, this is an attempt here to speed up the process. So this really will do a picture in a matter of seconds instead of maybe 30 seconds, 50 seconds, a minute to scan a photo there. Now, what I don't like about this is the price, $650, it's a little pricey there. Uh,
Yeah, there's there's a number of devices out there that uh, will let you uh, print from the phone. Uh, you just slide the phone into the adapter, and and uh, then it'll let you print directly from the phone. Uh, I, you know, I, I, how useful they are, I, I don't, I wouldn't go down that route. Uh, you know, because if you do want to print from your phone. Most people now have a Wi-Fi enabled printer at home. If you have a Wi-Fi enabled printer at home, I can be at home, I can bring up my photo and I can print my photo to my Wi-Fi enabled printer. So without, without uh, uh, you know, attaching it or downloading the pictures or doing anything, I can, I can print from my phone directly to the printer there. And, and as long as you're at home, uh, you know, certainly it doesn't work if you're on vacation and you'd like to get that quick picture. It doesn't work for that. But uh, for if you're uh, at home and you just took a picture of the grandkids or the kids and you wanted to get something to share with somebody, uh, you should be able to set up your printer and then print directly there. And it'd be much cheaper for the ink and much cheaper for the paper and all the material than these specialized devices try and keep themselves so thin and it, it, it's expensive. And then that also means that if you truly want to have it with you, you've got to carry that extra, extra piece that you're docking in with you on that. Yes, Jim. There are some like yeah, so there are some options. Uh, back here to this photo, I think what you're going to see is, excuse me, a number of the scanners are going to be ending up changing. Because uh, last time I talked about uh, scanning slides and uh, scanning slides and negatives, I showed the device that I use, which is just a little power box, about four inches by four inches and eight inches high. And that I had purchased, or you can purchase it for about $50. And that essentially is a camera up at the top pointing down. And then you, the slides go in the bottom. There's a light source underneath. Light shines through, camera takes a picture. Those types of devices, again, you hook it up to your, your computer, it's a matter of seconds to scan that slide because it's really just taking a picture of that and uh, putting it on your, on your computer there where you can then manipulate it and, and do your stuff. So I think you're going to see more and more of those, those devices because really that's all this is, is the Epson isn't scanning it's taking a picture of, of the picture. And you could do that yourself if you had a good tripod and good light sources. You could, you could take uh, decent pictures uh, that way, uh, and that would save you the trouble of scanning there also. OK. Uh, another gadget here. Uh, this is a portable Wi-Fi router. and. Uh, because if you travel a lot or, or go places, sometimes it's handy to have your own Wi-Fi. And whether you do the Wi-Fi through your phone and make it available, uh, here's, here's an example of a router there that lets you connect m multiple devices. Because in the old days, we used to just have one device maybe that we were trying to connect. Now you have a phone, a tablet. The kids have tablets. You have all this stuff that you want to connect in and use. Uh, this is the Lenovo uh, yoga book. Uh, and what this is, is the unit itself. So this is a tablet here. Uh, the only thing unique about this is this is, a, uh, I don't know what you call it. Uh, well, it's a paper sketch. So you can sketch down here. And it's picking up the strokes and the stuff like that and then putting it up on the tablet up here. 
So this is a sensitive surface here. This is the stylus that's used, and you can draw on here and have everything uh, um, in there. So if, if just kind of a, another uh, unusual use there. Uh, this is a thermal imaging device, uh, so it'll let you do heat signatures, uh, uh, see where uh, heat is uh, escaping from your house and things like that. Uh, so they're starting to tie in some of these other devices with apps and uh, with other things out there. This is a, a drone. Um, the unusual thing about this drone is uh, to move it from location to location, these, uh, these appendages here fold back into the unit. So it ends up being an egg and you can transport it very easily and not worry about damaging anything or have a special box for it. Uh, you can uh, transport it very easily and safely. And then when you get to your location, you just pop out these appendages here will pop out and then you can uh, use the drone there. How many people have a drone? Oh, a few. You know, it looked like last year that they were going to completely outlaw them and, and things like that, or, you know, you had to uh, file your, uh, uh, your registration for the drones and stuff like that, and now people have kind of calmed down a little bit. Uh, there's still a little... Uh, uh, fury over, well, who's taking pictures, what are they taking pictures of, and who owns the airspace, and who's doing what. But uh, uh, drones certainly have come down in price, and uh, uh, the capability of flying them, and the quality of the video, and things like that are just keep getting better and better. And when Amazon starts using them to deliver their packages and or dropping burritos when you order your burrito from uh, Chipotle, so they're coming. Yes. <laughs> Ed, did you want to did you want to try and answer that? What what do you use your? your neighbor. <laughs> so there are there are lots of uses. Uh, the other the other thing I've heard is that you mentioned it a little bit. Professional photographers. Uh, so if like you're selling a house or things like that, uh, taking the pictures or a video, uh, uh, very useful there. And so. You know, you invest a little bit of money in the device, and if you want, you can uh, sell the videos, sell some of the, oh, no, Jim is shaking his head, can't sell the video. What do, what do they classify on YouTube, Bill? I mean, technically, you're making money. Okay. 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 
Check with Jim if you want to, uh, <laughs> or if you don't want to get in legal trouble, uh, don't check with him and uh, cash, only do cash. And uh, <laughs> this, is, this is an interesting uh, game. Uh, so this is a, a little drone here, a little uh, uh, four uh, fan drone here. And uh, the game here, uh, uses the drone, it combines the remote control of the quadcopter with a, a virtual reality game to give the users a chance to practice flying uh, inside. So you're indoors and you're doing missions and you're doing things there. So kind of a different game there and utilizing the, uh, the capabilities of the, of the drone technology there. Uh, this is just a, a big speaker there, some of the advantages of this speaker. And, and again, Bluetooth speakers are getting better and better because obviously when if you have a device like your phone, the sound quality can only be so good on here. Uh, you have to have a Bluetooth speaker to get uh, better sound. Well, here's an example here of uh, a really high quality sound. Uh, battery life, uh, 60 plus hours on, on a charge of the battery there. Uh, so uh, lots of capabilities there. You are, you are paying a chunk for it, but if you do uh, entertain outside or at a beach or things like that, certainly it's a nice thing to have there. Uh, this I thought was kind of interesting here. This is a, <clears throat> it's an imaging tool. And the imaging tool uh, will interface with your smartphone in that. So it's like uh, peeling back the wallboard. Uh, so it'll show you what's behind the wallboard uh, and things like that. So it's using, I think, ultrasound and a few other things there to do it, uh, or magnetically, it's magnetically doing things. And uh, I think you're gonna see, again, more and more devices like that, because you do see infrared, the infrared stuff, you do see, these other things that hook into the smartphone to uh, let you control and see what's uh, going on there. Here, if you have a pampered pet, uh, so we, we, we mentioned earlier, you know, some of the Fitbits and some of the other things. Well, if you have, uh, whether it's a cat or a dog or that, they make the devices for the animals now, which only makes sense which almost makes more sense than the human because now you can check and see how much activity your dog is getting. <laughs> are they getting in their steps? Uh, how much are they sleeping? Uh, uh, what are they doing? So here's an example here of, uh, of a unit itself. What's that? They, they do mention some of the other, <laughs> the cats are gonna sleep all day. You may be disappointed, but, uh, here, here's another example, and some of the differences between like these two units are this you could, if you were at work, you can check and see uh, how active your dog is because there's a unit that this talks between the unit and then uploads the information to the internet. This by itself does not uh, upload it. You have to, you know, use Bluetooth, so you'd have to take your phone or your tablet, get it close enough sync the information, download the information, then you could view it. So there's uh, various ways to look at the information and, and get at the information. This, this I thought was kind of neat here. This is, it's called the, uh, the helmet, but really all it is is it's a video camera. So there's a video camera in here that you can control from your smartphone. And so uh, when you're at work for $149, you can pan it around, uh, you can zoom in, you can uh, do stuff at your home. It's intended for pets though. Uh, so you can monitor what's going on. This is where for a cat, uh, it also has a laser pointer that's attached to this. <laughs> so, so the laser, you can activate the laser pointer and you have three patterns. You can drive them wild <laughs> with a circular motion, a straight line, or infinite pattern. So it'll just, the camera will be going up and down, and so the laser will be going, going across there, which, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, Cap may get mad at you and uh, and attack, but. Uh, <laughs> this I thought was kind of kind of neat here. Uh, this is a larger unit, so this unit sits up sits up higher here. Uh, and what you do is you load it with uh, dog food or cat food, whatever you want there, and it has a camera. So this you can, you can also view, you know, the animal and say things, two-way communication, so you can hear and you can talk. Uh, but you can also trigger it to release treats. I, whatever, whatever you want. Now, I don't know if the animal gets angry, does he start hitting it or, or what's there? But you can you can control it to to uh, feed the feed uh, feed out treats there. That's all I had. Does anyone have anything else that they uh, have seen or uh, want to ask a question about? Good job. Good job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Get out on Black Friday. Yes, sir. Is a question back? Well, the, the trouble is that there's, there's nothing really the government can do unless you want them to put in more regulations. And these regulations would only stop the things that we know about right now. It does not stop what's going to happen tomorrow. And so when you talk about denial of service attacks, once a corporation is familiar with that, because 3M has been attacked millions of times, not millions, but certainly thousands of times by denial of service and other things there. You can filter out that and you can make it appear to your clients as if nothing's happening. So there are ways to, as a company, if I have a website, I can program around some of this stuff to get it to work. Uh, the fact that these devices were hacked to do that purpose Yes, you could create better devices, but it also is up to the individual users to go in and change the passwords. A number of these were routers. Again, people buy a router, they take it out of the box, they connect it up, everything works and they're happy. But the fact of the matter is that router came with default settings, default administrator passwords and accounts, and those can be hacked because it's, if I just do a Google search, I can find out for the Linksys router, what's the default account and password? Well, it's, everybody knows it. So there's things like that. Uh, uh, you can create better security on devices, whether it's uh, a camera in the home or you know this, this uh, dog feeding application. You can put more stuff around it, but then that's gonna drive the price up you know, potentially drive the price up. Plus, like I say, it fixes this immediate problem, but give hackers a week, two weeks, whatever, and they can hack in and they can find another way to get around it and to do things. So you're, you're, you're always vulnerable to uh, somebody, somebody getting into this stuff and causing problems. So you can't be protected from everything. You can just be aware of what's out there. Okay. Any other question or otherwise? Thanks for coming, and we'll see you next month. Thank you. <laughs>